Welcome back students. In the last couple of lectures we handled the first two steps in this process of getting data from PostGIS into Leaflet. We saw how we can write a SQL query and using PHP and PDO we can send that query to the database and we saw how we can convert the data that's returned from the database into GeoJSON using PHP. And so we're using PHP for both of these first two steps. But remember, PHP is running on the server. It can't respond to user events on the client. We can't display data on the client. It's almost like it's two different worlds. And so the question is, how do we get these to talk to each other? We need to be able to access PHP on the server from JavaScript, which is running on the client. And the way that we do that is through a technology called AJAX. AJAX allows you to send a request to the server and get a response back from the server without having to reload the page. And so let's review a little bit about AJAX. It's an acronym that stands for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. And that probably doesn't mean a whole lot to you. In fact, it's far more common these days for it to be getting data back not as XML but as JSON. But XML was very common at the time when AJAX first began being used. But it's actually a group of technologies that work together that allow you to request data from the server without having to reload the entire web page. So pure PHP web applications, like the content management system that we're using, have to reload the entire page in order to change its content. AJAX allows you to call a PHP script on the server from within JavaScript, and then anything that PHP script echoes out will be returned to the client as the response. So calling the script is the request, and whatever that script echoes out is the response. So it's nothing different than a normal client-server kind of workflow. The client sends a request, the server interprets that request and returns a response, and then the client does something with that response. Now what the response that gets sent back is, and how that response is interpreted in JavaScript, is completely up to you because you're the programmer. You can write the script, you can do anything you want in that script, you can send back anything you want as a response, and then in JavaScript you can do whatever you want with it. So there's a tremendous amount of flexibility. And again, you can do this without loading an entire page. So this response might be a message that you're going to display to the user from something on the server, or maybe it's a message that you use in your JavaScript code to determine what to do next. You use it to control the flow of the program in JavaScript. Now, very commonly, it's data in JSON format, usually in JSON format. It could be some other format, but JSON works really well with JavaScript, so that's most common, and that's what we're going to be using in this class. Or it might be HTML that can be inserted directly into the DOM. So we can build HTML in our PHP script and send that back. And then when JavaScript receives it as a response, it can you can use jQuery or straight JavaScript really, but usually we we'll use jQuery to select a DOM element and insert that HTML in there. And it will appear instantaneously without having to reload the entire page. And that's important, especially with mapping applications, because in our content management system, we're just getting a little bit of data back from the server. And since it's a small amount of data, it happens very quickly. But with GIS applications, we often have a map, and that can have a lot of GIS data. And that data can take up a lot of space. And because it's large, it can take up a lot of time sending it back and forth across the internet. And if you're paying data charges, it could also get very expensive. And so we don't want to reload our entire web map. And so AJAX is going to work really well with us for GIS data. So I'm not going to get into the very roots of AJAX because we're using jQuery in this class. And so I'm just going to show you how to use it with jQuery. And we can use the jQuery AJAX method for that. And this makes things a lot simpler for us. So we call the AJAX method just with the dollar sign. That's the jQuery object and then a period and AJAX. And then we pass that method an object. 
and the object contains optional parameters. It can contain, there's a number of different things it can contain. And the simplest way to use it, we're going to pass it a property in that option. It has a key of URL, and the value of that property, in this case, is going to be load underscore baea.php. And if you remember, that's the script that we wrote in the last lecture that queries the database, returns all the data in the Eagle's Nest table in the database as GeoJSON. And remember we said that the response from an AJAX request is whatever text gets echoed out from the script. And we saw what gets echoed out, it's GeoJSON. So what we're going to get back when this script is run on the server as a response is the GeoJSON, what we saw on the screen in the last lecture. So the first thing we have to send it is the script that we want to run. The second thing that we want to send it is a success function. And so this is a method with a key of success and we pass it an anonymous function and that function receives automatically the response. And so this function is run if an AJAX query is successful. That means that we actually found the script, made a connection, and got a response back. And then in that function, we can handle that response any way we want. So I'm trying to keep things very simple in this example. So all I'm going to do is just alert the response. So we'll just see a text box with the response that's coming back from this script. And then another optional parameter that we should always have is the error parameter. That's also a method. It takes an anonymous function. And it's going to get three different variables. We're not going to worry about XHR. That's actually the XML request object. And you can do some things with that. We're not going to do anything with that in our class. It also contains a status, which is a number that's set for 4 status or 500 status or something like that. If we have an error connecting to this script. And then it also contains a message that we're going to put in a variable called error. And then I'm just going to alert out the text error plus the message that's returned if there's an error. So this may seem a little bit odd, this kind of programming paradigm. These are called callback functions. And the reason we write them as functions that get run as either a success or an error is that JavaScript is asynchronous. And that means that it's going to run this code in the background. And so when we get an AJAX request, it runs a script on the server, and then it's going to come down here and continue running whatever JavaScript that you have down here. So it doesn't stop you from interacting with the interface. You don't have to wait for this to finish loading. And it might take a little bit if it's loading a bunch of GIS data. And so we wait until we have a success or a failure, and then we run one of these functions. And that's a little bit different, and it can be a little tricky to get your head around. It can cause some problems in your code because you might do some things in here, set some variables or something that you expect to be available in your code down here, like would normally happen in JavaScript, but they're not because this code down here is, might run before this code because this code doesn't run until this script is finished running on the server. So just something to keep in mind. And we're going to see an example of that really quickly here. So let's go to our editor and stick this code in and see what happens. So I'm in my DJ Basin client. I'm going to come down here after all the HTML into my JavaScript. And let's say right here before we load our Eagle's Nest data, I'm going to stick that AJAX script in there. So I'm just going to indent this a bit to make it look nice. And let's see what happens when I load this page. I'll go to DJ Basin Client, and there we have an alert. And this alert has JSON. This is the exact same JSON that we get on our screen if we call load.eagle.php from the address bar in Google Chrome. It's the same thing. That's what comes back as our response. So let's do something a little bit different with the response. Let's log into the console so we can take a look at it. 
But before we do that, we're going to parse it into an actual object. Remember, it's coming back as string. And this JSON parse function takes this JSON string and turns it into a JavaScript object. And once it's an object, then we can explore it a little bit in the console log. So let's take a look. We'll go back. And something seems like it didn't work. Missing parentheses. Of course, I need another parentheses here. So let's try that again. I'm in my console. I got my response back here. Where I also got something else in here from line 401. It looks like I console logged out these burying out buffers too. But anyhow, this first one is the one from our eagle's nest, our Ajax function. And we can see it has a type of feature collection. It has 70 features. And we can look at each. Let's look at number 10. It has a geometry property that has GeoJSON. It has a properties property that has the data from the row. And it has a type of feature. So looks like everything's working. And we actually have GeoJSON. Now we looked at it as text in the alert box, and we just looked at it as an object in the console. Well, that's not really useful. What we actually want to do is display it on the map, right? So let's do that. Let's, instead of just displaying that, we'll assign it to a variable called JSON Eagles, and then we'll create a layer. We'll just call it layer test, just so we don't confuse it with anything important. And we'll set that equal to leaflet, call the GeoJSON object of leaflet. And we'll pass it that GeoJSON eagles data. This is our data now. And then the layer, we'll go ahead and add it to the map. And we'll see what happens. Ooh, it says JSON Eagles is not defined. I don't know why I had a colon in there instead of an equals. Let's try this again. And there we have it. These blue markers are just the default symbol. And there's one on every eagle's nest. So we got our JSON data. We're displaying it on the map. Just like we're doing here where we're calling the Ajax method of the GeoJSON. And opening it up from a data file. So now that we see that it's actually working, I'm going to change this from layer test to our actual eagle's nest layer. And I'm going to copy this set of optional parameters that's going to filter and set the symbology for our eagle's layer. This is identical from here. It's just we're getting from a different source now. So I'll pop that right in there. And then this GeoJSON Ajax method that we use to call data from a file on disk has a data loaded event that runs when all the data is loaded. And we actually want to do the same thing, but we're going to do it now inside our success function because the success function also runs only after all the data is loaded. And so we can stick this in here. It does the exact same thing. So these two pieces of code should be doing the same thing. The only difference is the source of the data here is coming from the database from our load underscore baea.php file. And that's returning JSON. And this was just reading JSON directly from a text file. So I've got this commented out. I'm going to save it and go back and run it again. And we'll see if we actually get all the symbology and everything just like we wanted for the eagle's nest. And we do. We're getting the symbology for the eagle's nest. Here we're getting all this other data. So it's working. Now we do have a problem here. It's saying cannot read set Z index of undefined. And that's coming from this line of code right now. And so it's line 432. Let's take a look at that in our brackets text editor and see if we can figure out what's going on. So what's happening is it's getting down here to the layers control and trying to create the layer control. 
The layer control is referencing this layer, Eagle's Nest layer, and it's choking on that because now we're running this asynchronously, right? So it comes here, it sees the AJAX function, it runs this script. While that script is running, it continues with JavaScript, and it comes down here, and it tries to use this layer Eagle's Nest. Well, that layer Eagle's Nest hasn't been created because this script is still running on the server, and it's not until that script finishes running that we create this layer Eagle's Nest. So it's referencing something that doesn't exist quite yet. And that's a problem that we often find when we're dealing with asynchronous code. And it can be a bugger to figure out sometimes. But I have a solution, and I'll tell you about it in the next lecture. And in the next lecture, we'll also go through and we'll take a closer look at the program and see if anything else got broken or isn't working quite the way it should as a result of this change that we just made. And we'll see you then.